We begin tonight talking about your health. Joining us is Dr. Kashif Munir. He is an endocrinologist at the University of Maryland Center for Diabetes and Endocrinology and professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Doctor, thank you for joining us again. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure One to be here. One of the here. biggest stories <clears throat> in medicine this year has been drugs like Ozempic in the GLP-1 category. Uh, everybody knows about them for weight loss. What's been your experience? Yeah, so um, what's interesting is that these drugs, uh, GLP-1, uh, or what we call glucagon-like peptide 1 uh, receptor agonist, um, they've been around for a long time, more than 20 years actually, but people have just started to learn or hear more about them recently. And uh, initially they were um, made for diabetes, to treat diabetes, and um, they've worked really well, but in, you know, in the beginning you had to take multiple shots per day, and now they have it so that the formulation is once a week. So it's much easier. And I think with social media, which is you know, a trend of the times, that people have just learned more about them and um, have really you know, jumped on uh, onto this. So what we know is that diabetes, initially we thought it, you know, insulin's the main driver hormone for diabetes, but what we know now is that there are many, many hormones that are involved in, in glucose regulation or your sugar, blood sugar regulation. And, and so GLP-1 is one of those hormones and has a, has a really important role to play in, in our own body system. We, we make GLP-1 in our gut um, and to, to regulate our blood sugar, but also it can help with things like weight loss. And whether or not you have diabetes, it can work with weight loss. Yeah, so that's what, you know, more recently, that's what we've discovered is that, well, they knew with patients with diabetes using these drugs, they were losing weight. So they said, well, why don't we try it in patients without diabetes? And so they did the trials and, and saw amazing effects and, and it was just as good, you know, with weight loss in people with or without diabetes. And, and you, you read about um, substantial weight loss. What, what can it be? Yeah, I mean, people can lose 20% of their body weight or more. So if you're 200 pounds, that's 40 pounds, right? So it's, it's, it's significant. And it's one of those things that we've had a lot of drugs for weight loss over the years. Uh, safety was always the biggest issue. A lot of these drugs um, uh, people would have heart issues with or, or other side effects. And so um, nothing was really out there that you could use long term uh, and that you would be certain would be safe. Uh, the amazing thing about this class of medication is that not only uh, we have 20 plus years of data now, but um, they actually prevent things like heart disease or kidney disease. And so not only are they safe, but they actually treat uh, conditions that, that we worry about with people that are overweight or have diabetes. Maybe uh, addiction issues, I've read. Addiction issues, there's, there are a lot of new things that we're, we're just learning. And so um, it seems like there's, you know, a lot, a lot of things that these drugs could potentially treat. It sounds like a, a magic <clears throat> pill, but at this point it's, it's still a shot, right? Yeah, so mainly a shot. There is one oral version or a pill version uh, of the medication, uh, but in, you know, they're researching mel multiple different uh, drugs now, and so some of the drugs are just the GLP-1, but one of the drugs that we hear about, Monjaro, um, is actually, or, um, uh, the other name for it is ZepBound, so whether it's for diabetes or weight loss, it's actually two different hormones, GLP-1 and GIP, which is another gut hormone that's important for uh, diabetes, but also, um, or blood sugar control and also weight. Um, but now they're coming up with all these different combinations of other hormones too. So we know that blood sugar control is, it, it involves multiple different hormones, not just insulin or GLP-1. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a question about the weight loss medications, send us an email, livequestions at mpt.org, and we'll have that on the screen as well. All right, let's talk about the, uh, the downsides. They're expensive. We can come back to that. But there, there must be some side effects. Yeah, the main side effects are usually gastrointestinal or GI. Um, so nausea, uh, some people can even have vomiting. Um, but it can even lead to things like um, some people who develop gallstones, um, there's a association with pancreatitis possibly. Some studies have said yes, some studies have said maybe not, but we've seen there's definitely some people that, that it might trigger that. Um, you know, it can slow down your bowel and constipation. So there, there are potential side effects, mostly in the GI system. I, I think if you gave me a pill that made me nauseous, I could lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, yeah. how big a part of the effect is that you don't really feel like eating? Yeah. So. 
nausea and not feeling like eating are two different things. So, so it seems like the nausea is a, a less common thing. And, and a lot of times you actually have to, it's just building the drug up slowly. So we start with very low doses and we do that for a while, at least a month, and then we start to slowly increase the dose as people tolerate it. Some people can't tolerate even the lowest doses, but most people can. And if you go slowly, um, it is tolerable for the majority of people. Um, but the decrease in appetite is something that, it's not necessarily nausea, you just don't feel like eating. People will use words like it decreases the food noise, that you're not always thinking about food or eating, or if you see you know, a bag of cookies, people and patients have said this to me, before they might eat half or the whole thing, now after one or two, I'm satisfied, I'm done. So they don't, they don't have that drive to keep eating. That's so amazing. Yeah. I mean, so, so what's the mechanism? How, how does it do that? Yeah, so there are receptors in the brain for this GLP-1 hormone, and um, they're in the what we call the satiety center. It makes you satiated. So um, these, this hormone uh, promotes those receptors to make you feel less hungry. Um, it's probably similar to how it might help addiction, that you don't have that urge, right, like decreasing the food noise, but decreasing the addiction noise of whatever it may be that you're, you're addicted to. Um, email question. This is Cindy. I'm 26. Wanted to know if that would be safe for me to take. I am 250 pounds and non-diabetic. What would, what would you tell this patient? Yeah, I mean, um, I, not giving personal advice, but right. in somebody in that situation, yeah, it's, it's definitely, so they even um, have started to use these drugs in the pediatric population, so even younger than 26, and, and um, so far we've, we've seen good long-term safety. Um, now they've been around for 20 some years, not. 50 years or 100 years, so again, we can't, we can't predict these things uh, uh, super long-term, but we have good, at least medium long-term data that they're safe. How difficult is it to stop taking this even after it has succeeded? Got it, it's gotten you to a, a desired weight and you want to cut back um, because people don't want to be taking pills or giving themselves shots forever. Yeah. What happens when you stop? Yeah, that's the big question people always ask. Um, so most studies show that people will regain weight. Um, and, and part of it depends on how you change, right? So if, if you make major lifestyle changes in your diet, your activity levels, um, some people can stop them and actually maintain. And I've had patients you know, lose weight and, and be able to maintain even if they cut back or, or even stop the medication. Um, but you know, this is, it's like most chronic disease, diseases, obesity is, is similar, diabetes, high blood pressure, most of the time when you just start taking medication for it, you end up taking it indefinitely. Um, but you know, as time goes on, we'll have new things, maybe, you know, at some point we'll figure out a mechanism or a way to stop these drugs safely. Uh, but right now, most people do need to take it long term. Does it help people who are primarily in your practice because of diabetes? Um, yeah, I mean, I just mean, the, the idea of losing weight, mm -hmm. does that help? Yeah, definitely. So I think, you know, the medicines have different, different effects. They can increase your insulin, so they help kind of control your blood sugar that way. They decrease a hormone called glucagon, which is um, uh, what we call a counter-regulatory hormone to insulin, so it kind of counteracts the effects of insulin. Uh, so you decrease that so you're not countering your insulin. And then it, you know, provides a satiety and it also slows your stomach down, so you kind of get full quicker, you're actually getting full because your stomach's not emptying as quickly, so the food will kind of sit in your stomach longer and then you don't feel like eating. Um, so that's the main effect, but you know, it has all these other effects that we're just learning about on things like inflammation and like we talked about um, you know, in the brain and in, in, in the gut. And um, these things can help, you know, now they have data that it helps heart disease, it helps heart failure, it helps kidney disease. It can help people with sleep apnea. It can help people with something called fatty liver disease, which we see often in people that are overweight or have diabetes. And so, and these are all things that can lead to things like, you know, kidney disease can lead to eventually dialysis or, or liver disease that can lead to cirrhosis. And, um, and so, you know, we're really causing or, or preventing these really negative consequences or, or complications that can occur uh, with these Conditions. What do you see in your practice in terms of insurance coverage? I mean, in the diabetic population, you said that's what it was originally developed for, so I'm guessing that's easier. If somebody's in front of you um, with a serious weight problem, can, can they generally get it approved? Yeah, that's, 
that's the tricky part. So for diabetes, there's better coverage overall. Uh, most insurers uh, will cover at least one or multiple drugs in the class. Um, but um, for overweight or obesity, it really depends on the insurance. And so that is a struggle. Uh, some people, um, you know, they would be a great candidate for it, but the insurance won't cover it. There are plans now coming out to make these drugs cheaper for people, even if they can buy it directly from the company. But still, you know, instead of $1,500, it might be three or $400. So still expensive, but uh, a little less expensive than they used to be. A couple things people do about the cost. There are compounding pharmacies, mm -hmm. which they just make it up. Yeah. They, they manufacture it basically yeah. on, uh, on a small dose basis, small batch basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you know these drugs were in shortage uh, for a long time because there was such uptake and demand for them, and and so a lot of the compounding pharmacies got into the game because they're patented, so you're not allowed to do that. But if you're in a shortage, then the FDA allows it, and so companies started making them. Uh, but now they have you know enough supply, and so it's it's really the FDA doesn't allow that anymore. But people still will do it. The, the tricky part with compounding pharmacies is you just don't know for sure what you're getting because these things are not regulated. And so there have been reports of people either getting too much of the medicine, too little, you know, they're charging you for not giving you anything, or um, they're giving you too much and they kind of um, escalate the dose too quickly so there's more side effects. Um, and sometimes they're mixing other things in the, in the medicine as well, and so that also is a safety concern. The other thing you read about sometimes to deal with the cost is called microdosing, which I think means taking less of it than they typically prescribe. Have you seen anyone in your practice do that and did it work? Yeah, so it, it can work. Um, some people are very sensitive to these medications and so uh, we actually sometimes prescribe it for people. We see that they're doing great on it, but they have side effects. So some of the pen devices you can actually, we do it by clicks actually, so you can click you know, take three clicks of, of this medicine and, and it actually works for some people. So it's not, it's off-label, it's not something that the FDA necessarily approves of, but it's, you're using lower doses than even the, the starting prescription doses. And for some people, because they're so sensitive, it actually helps them without, you know, having uh, the side effects. Um, viewer wants to know, family member gained a great deal of weight on psychiatric medications, might she benefit from these drugs? Yes, it's possible. So you, you can. Um, now, there, um, there are some reports of possible psychiatric side effects. Um, again, it's not fully validated, but you know, in some cases they thought maybe depression, but then in some studies they've shown that it might improve that. So you have to be careful, but if you do it slowly, it's, you know, there is potential benefit, uh, but under supervision. Um, another viewer wants to know what options of these medications would be better suited for a patient with one kidney, uh, mid-50s, currently taking diabetes meds such as Jardiance or Janumet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are uh, <laughs> I mean, specific a, questions. Yeah. yeah. So you can, you can use it, um, you know, they, and they're actually protective for the kidneys. Janumet has a drug in there called Citagliptin, which um, it's somewhat redundant with some of the GLP ones, so you, so usually we would stop that. Um, and you know the Jardiance is fine. The Janumet has two drugs: it's Citagliptin, Metformin. You can take the Metformin, but we would typically stop the Citagliptin if you wanted to use one of these drugs. Um, another viewer wants to know about uh, hair loss with this. Is that a that a thing? So. All drugs have sometimes weird side effects, and so I have heard that. I've had people have shoulder pain. I've had people, most people get constipation. Some people get diarrhea. So you can get unusual side effects sometimes. It's just idiosyncratic. We don't know why it happens, but it's not a, a common or you know common side effect of these. Last thing, um, everybody's seen the, the TV ads, and everybody in the ads looks very happy <laughs> on, on these medications. So maybe yeah. people are interested in this. Do you go to your primary care, or do you, do you want to see a specialist, um, someone like you, uh, depending on other uh, conditions you might have? Yeah, so I think a lot of primary cares are now writing these drugs. So it, it's really a discussion. If you discuss it with your primary care and they feel like they can write it and they're, they're comfortable with it and they have uh, you know, good familiarity with it, then that's fine. Um, we're also kind of trying to use these drugs for, for all these other 
in conditions that you can prevent, you know, kidney disease, heart disease, uh, fatty liver disease. And so, um, you know, a lot of times people want the weight loss for the cosmetic reasons, but we also find that there's such a huge metabolic benefit of all these conditions that you can treat uh, and really help people long-term prevent serious complications. And so that's, that's our you know, primary concern. Dr. Kashif Munir, University of Maryland Medical Center. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.